Hi guys and welcome to another video on data mining the social media with Python video tutorials. Today we are going to talk about how you can download your friends and followers profiles. So given the, the discussion on the relevant endpoints in the previous video, we can create a script that takes a username, screen name as input and downloads their complete file complete profile, the list of followers with complete profiles as well, and the list of friends also with complete profiles. So this is the file where we are going to download our friends and followers of a profile. You can do this on your own or a specific profile that you would like to download statistics or data from. Statistics comes later. So if you want to follow along, uh, please do pause the video. I'm going to scroll down in a few seconds. It's pretty straightforward, the code. I'm scrolling down so you can have the rest of it. And what this script basically does is that it takes one argument from the command line. Which is here. Which is the screen name of the user that we want to analyze. And we can run it. Let's do it for our friends packet pub again. And you can see that I've already ran it for ran it for my oh my profile. So in the users it will create another folder. If you look at the code, it creates a folder. So let's run this script. So it might take some time because they have more than 10,000 followers. So I'm just going to pause the video. So now the code has uh, finished running. And because PackPub has more than 10,000 10, followers or more, the script will take more than three or four minutes to run due to the restriction imposed by the API. So if you see at the code, it uh, also uh, briefly described in the time uh, tutorial series about mining Twitter with Python. This script uses time.sleep to slow down the execution and avoid hitting the rate limits. The number of seconds passed to the sleep function is uh, dictated by the API. So if we go to our users folders, it has now a packet pub and it created the, the files that we need to analyze our data. So the next step is analyzing your network. So after downloading the data related to friends and followers of a given profile, we can start some exploratory analysis on the structure of uh, the network created by these connections. So this image that we are seeing here shows a fic fictitious example of a small network of users with the links between users highlighted from a first person point of view, that is from the point of view of the user labeled me. So we'll describe the picture in first person. So in this example, I'm connected to four different users, Peter and John, they follow me. So they are labeled as followers, while I follow Lucy, Mary and John, so they are labeled as friends. John belongs to both groups. The intersection between friends and followers is described as mutual friends. 
What we don't know from this representation is whether these four users also have connections between them. This is the nature of the data we have downloaded in the previous section. We have information about friends and followers of the given profile, but we want to discover the connections among them. We need to iterate through all their profiles and download relevant data. And with, did, with, with the, this data, we have the basic statistics on the number of followers and friends. And we can now answer the following basic questions. Who are my mutual friends? Who is not following me back? Whom am I not following back? And we have another script, which is called followers underscore stats. It reads the JSON-L files previously downloaded that we just downloaded and computes the statistics to answer these questions. So pause the video if you want to try it out and copy the code. And we'll run the script very shortly. So let's run this script now. Stats, and then we run it on our download files. And it says here it has 15,000 followers and they have 1,153 friends and 453 mutual friends, 700 friends are not following packet pub back and 14,547 followers are not followed back by packet pub. So the data types used to handle friends and followers is a regular Python list filled in with usernames, screen under dot name to be precise. The code reads the two JSON-L files, adding the screen names to their respective lists. Three list comprehensions are then used to build different statistics. So a, a little note on list comprehension in Python. Python supports a concept called list comprehension, an elegant way to transform one list or any iterable to into another list. During this process, elements can be conditionally included and transformed by a custom function. For example, these three lines here. So this code is equivalent to this code. So a nice aspect a nice aspect of list comprehensions is that they can also be read in plain English, so the code is particularly readable. Comprehensions are not limited to only list. In fact, they can also be used to build dictionaries. There are a couple of considerations about this aspect of implementation. Firstly, the JSON-L files will contain unique profiles each follower or friend will be listed only once, so we don't have duplicate, duplicate entries. Secondly, when computing the preceding statistics, the order of the items is irrelevant. In fact, all we are doing is computing set-based operations, intersection and difference in this example. So we can refactor our code to implement the basic statistics using set. The changes in the script are related how we can load the data and calculate mutual friends, friends who are not following back and followers not following back. And the implementation is here. So pause the video and copy the code and I will scroll down very soon.
So if you run this code, So this will produce the same output as the code using lists. The timestamps are just used for just to, for computational uh, purposes. The main advantage of using sets rather than lists is the computational complexity operations such as containment. That is a check for item in I, in list or item in set run in uh, linear time for lists and in constant time for sets. Containment is used to build uh, mutual underscore friends, followers underscore not following and friends underscore not underscore following. So this simple change will affect the total runtime of the script in a noticeable way and with a higher number of followers slash friends is this difference is even clearer due to the linear complexity needed for lists. A couple of words on computational complexity. So we have used phrases such as linear time, constant time and linear complexity. The concept of computational complexity is an important one in computer science as it regards the amount of resources required by an algorithm to run. In this paragraph we will discuss time complexity and the amount of time taken by an algorithm to run described as function of the size of its input. When an algorithm runs in linear time for large input size its running time increases linearly with the size of the input. The mathematical notation called big O notation to describe this class of algorithm is O and N in brackets where N is the size of the input. For algorithms that run in constant time instead, the size of the input does not affect the running time. The notation used in this case is O and one in brackets. In general, understanding the complexity of different operations and data structure is the key step when developing non-trivial programs, as this can have a huge impact on performances of our system. So we can also implement the same code with, with the libraries such as NumPy. And as already discussed in the first series, social media, social data in Python, NumPy offers fast and efficient processing for array-like data structures and provides significant performance improvements over simple lists. Despite being optimized for speed, using NumPy in this specific case wouldn't yield any particular benefit in terms of performance simply because the computational cost of the containment operation would be the same as the one for lists. So, But if you would like to try it out, you can refactor the code with NumPy. And again, put pause, copy the code. So let's try to run it. also gives us the same result some difference in time here approximately almost total time is the same so this snippet assumes that numpy has been imported with the alias np the library offers some set like operation uh, which is intersect 
1D and set diff 1D. But the underlying data structure is still an array-like object, like a list. The third argument for these functions, assume unique, can be used with the assumption that input arrays have unique elements, as in our case. This can help speeding up the calculation, but the bottom line remains the same. With more than hundreds of followers and friends, sets will be faster when performing these operations. The difference in performance will not be notice, noticeable for a small number of followers and friends. So to conclude this refactoring interlude, the main message is to choose the most appropriate data structure of the type of operations you're dealing with. So that's it for this video, guys. And the next video, we will talk about measuring influence and engagement on Twitter and how we use Python for that. So if you enjoy this video, please like it, hit the like button, subscribe, or even comment if you, you have any feedback. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.